everyone. Uh, I am Todd Obert, President and CEO of Productive, along with the CEO of VentTracker, uh, A.N. Anath. And we are here to talk to you today about the top five reports that auditors require. It's time to stop wondering and start knowing. Uh, very fortunate today to have Anath with us, uh, an expert in the space, um, has been uh, highly touted, highly regarded, and highly awarded for uh, you know his knowledge of the uh, security uh, event information management space and has products to boot. Event Tracker uh, recently receiving some nice awards from SC Magazine. So uh, sit back, relax. I think you're going to enjoy what he has to say. If you've been to our events in the past, you know we're more about technology, more about relevance, and less about talking about the Earth, Sun, and Moon via PowerPoint. So I think the slides we're going to show you uh, do make sense. As always, utilize that chat feature if you have questions. Right, first we'll meet productive in one minute. Uh, then we'll talk about what to expect when expecting an audit. Top five reports that auditors require, that 80-20 rule that is always so important. How to think about budgeting and uh, show you a little bit under uh, the hood. Um, use Q&A throughout, um, and Anath, I don't know if you're going to show um, the, the full range of stuff, or you're just going to show the, the full, uh, the, the Enterprise Edition or, uh, or whatever, but I'm sure people will be amenable to see whatever you got. So with that, let's meet Productive in one minute. Productive is a security and storage software expert for mid-size companies. We offer a bunch of uh, you know, specialized knowledge. We have dedicated account execs that answer licensing and technical questions, so you don't have to wait on hold or navigate the publisher yourself. We have tons of relevant resources on the site, brief product descriptions, key features, benefits, system requirements, requests for custom quotes, product documentation, all of it at ProductiveCorp.com. We also have uh, a lot of content for the mid-market, uh, two-minute tech guides, P-guide articles, product comparison videos, all to give you a third-party perspective on current IT trends for the mid-market. All of this can be found at ProductiveCorp.com backslash content. The bottom line here is we have the resources to help you. Help at ProductiveCorp, 800-726-4099. We are here to help. So with that, um, that's what we want to do. And, and one way we're uh, trying to help you out is bringing guys like Anathan to uh, help you understand in an environment where uh, you may be expecting an audit, um, you know, you want to start, uh, start thinking about that. So without further ado, I announced him at the top of the broadcast. I'm going to turn the microphone over to A.N. Anath, uh, President and CEO of EventTracker. Ladies and gentlemen, a uh, warm virtual round of applause for Anath. Hey, thank you, Todd. So kind of you. Um, happy to be in Minneapolis. Um, and I hope that you guys can uh, see my screen. And of course, I'd be happy to take questions at any point. The GoToMeeting session that we're using allows you to ask questions via that uh, GoToMeeting interface. And so if you have them, sing out at any point. Um, we're going to cover a few things, as we said what to expect when you're expecting an audit. You know, we found this to be a very useful thing um, when we were pregnant for the first time. Well, I wasn't, but my wife was. <laughs> what to expect when you're expecting, right? Because it's often that no one has quite told you in the old days where everyone was around, family was around, may not necessarily be true. So if you're feeling lonely, not, not to worry. We can explain what to expect. And the hint there is that the auditor is not the devil. Um, they're not out uh, to claim your everlasting soul. They wear their pants one leg at a time like the rest of us, or pants suit anyway. And so it's not, not a problem to satisfy their requirements once you understand where they're coming from uh, and what they're really looking for. So in that regard, what are the top five reports that they ask? And they tend to be the same regardless of the standard uh, that they're auditing to. Common ones are payment card industry, data security standard for people who are taking credit cards in the retail industry, as a for instance. There's HIPAA that you get in the uh, healthcare space and so on. 
We're also going to look at the 80-20 rule. We use this every day in our lives, uh, but we should use it during these situations as well. It says, how can I get 80% benefit for just 20% uh, of the cost? And yeah, there is a way to do that. Last but not the least, some numbers on um, getting it just right. You know, the Goldilocks problem, it, you don't want it to be too big or too small. You don't want to spend more than you need to or that your peers are spending. So where, where are those numbers? And the idea being to give you some clue as to what to, uh, what to do there. Um, so again, as I said, if you have questions, no problem, just ask. So context. If you're facing an audit, then to meet the requirements, you must, first of all, get the data from your IT assets. Keep it around for some period of time. That period of time defined by the standard could be as low as 13 months, which is what PCI DSS says. It could be as long as 10 years in some cases. Um, if, you're, if you're running nuclear bombs around the country on an aircraft, you probably want them forever. And something in between for the, for the rest of us. Uh, you must generate reports now that you have this data. What did all of these people do, you know, users do, admins do? What changes occurred in the environment? And then, of course, who touched what file? Now, in many ways, uh, this is stuff that you're probably aching or should be aching uh, to find out for yourself, never mind the auditor. How often have you put yourself in a situation where the boss came around and said, who touched the payroll file? And everyone stood up and said it wasn't me. And then it fell to the IT department to try and prove who it was. So if that's the kind of thing that you face ever, then this kind of software can be helpful, never mind whether you even need it for audit purposes. Because that's certainly something an auditor will ask you to do. The other thing is uh, that, yes, sir? Um, so it's not, I mean, right, you're talking about using it uh, for, for forensics. I mean, it's not a true forensics tool, but I mean, where would it rate on the ability to to, to use as a, a way to collect and find evidence? It would rate very highly indeed because a, as you see, all of the evidence is always inevitably in the logs. Um, there was a recent episode of Hawaii Five-O where the guy was kidnapped and he, you know, he leaves messages in the logs knowing that someone's actually going to look at it. Um, you see it all the time in Star Trek, right? They're busy running to the logs to find out what is it that has happened. So <laughs> forensics is is the problem that you're trying to solve is what happened on the night of the 15th. Well, yep. usually everything that the machine did, the human did, is covered in logs somewhere. So you're yep. looking for the four or five Ws, you know, who, what, where, and when. And logging is usually the deterministic method. And by the way, the U.S. courts agree. In many instances, in civil instances, when it has been required to prove, we had one uh, recently, you know, there was a wrongful dismissal case uh, bought in one of the California counties. Uh, employee wasn't following the guidelines that were laid down for internet use. And he was going to poker sites and whatnot during the day. He'd been warned repeatedly. And then ultimately he was fired because of the infraction. And, and when he came back and he challenged it, the question was, how do you know he did this? And the answer is, the evidence is there in the logs. And that was admissible in court. So from a forensics perspective, it really is uh, a lot about logging. Now, you might not get to court, but that question does frequently pop up. You know, who touched this? Uh, and and uh, logging is a very good technique to, to, to find all these. So there's a lots of different episodes uh, where this has come to, uh, come to life. From an uh, uh, auditor standpoint, though, they they're much more interested in process. And so they want evidence that you have, in fact, been reviewing. They're not so concerned about the action you took. You know, if Susan touched the payroll file that she wasn't supposed to, they don't really care. That's for you to care. What they care about is that you have a way of finding out and that you did look. And then you took whatever action you thought was appropriate. You know, whether that was to thank Susan or to fire Susan, that's really your call, not their call. Okay? Got it. Yep. So by the way, um, I've got a message here that says there are some difficulties uh, with the audio conference. Uh, we know that GoToMeeting has been having some problems with, uh, uh, with audio. Uh, if one of you that's attending can please let us know, are you able to hear us? That would be helpful. Um, the, 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 Todd, are you there? Yeah, you sound great to me. I, did you get that uh, internally, or you're offline now, or are you... Uh, um, it just says you just went offline on me, but uh, yeah, the you, message here says the connection to the GoToWebinar server has been lost. Please check your network connection. Uh, okay. But you can. Yeah, so you, I guess it the says phone. To me you're offline, so I think uh, I'll just uh, you know set it you out. Move to the can next you slide. hear me? 
Yeah, I'll I go to the next fine. one. You want me to take over a presentation and you want us to keep talking? No, I can I can do the talking if you do the slides. All right. That sounds, so the next uh, slide is a diagram that shows you um, the context of Event Tracker. I have to get there. Um, yep, I am there. Yep. Okay. So at the at the bottom of the uh, bottom of the slide deck of the slide are all of the assets that you have in the environment, right? Users, administrators, servers, desktops, applications, all of these kinds of things. At the very top are all of the uh, benefits or the outcomes that you're looking for. You want security. You're interested, perhaps, in regulatory compliance. Certainly, you want to do more with less. So cost control is a big thing. And a single pane of glass uh, would be nice because it's difficult to go over and look at 10 different panes of glass. So Event Tracker is designed to solve these problems with a variety of features, looking at not just event logs, but also other features such as configuration assessment and uh, change audit. Right? So then we can do a variety of things, including alerting in real time, correlating events, uh, performing remediation, and giving you compliance reports of different sorts, which is the primary objective perhaps of the audience today. So if you can go to the next slide. Yeah, uh, this slide talks months. about uh, yes, this slide talks about what we do with uh, with the data that we're ingesting. Right? We're producing alerts if they warrant it. So um, the challenge then is to only show you the relevant stuff and we do that uh, by looking at risk and prioritizing on the basis of risk. We also have a variety of reports and this is particularly relevant for uh, you know, for compliance, and we can show you uh, reports that are relevant to the kind of compliance that you're that you may be subject to. So, if you have FISMA or HIPAA or PCI DSS or anything else, then that's something that we can show you the relevant reports for. Also, dashboards of different sorts are available, so that you can get an at a glance view, and then you can also um, uh, search if that's your preference, which it is in a number of cases because we're in, we're indexing. Um, all of the logs uh, that we're receiving. So um, I, I assume you've taken control back. Um, yep, I have the uh, I have the control. So very good. So let's go to the next slide, and that is really what to expect. Primarily, auditors are looking for a process. You know, how do you propose to meet the standard? Explain, if you will. They will ask you to the tools and the controls and the process that you expect to have in place. And they will issue an opinion or a gap analysis that says, yeah, this is going to work, or no, it's not, and here are the things that you're missing. Uh, and then you'll also have evidence uh, that you have to present of uh, following the process. Have you actually followed, uh, uh, followed the process? These are the things that uh, uh, you know, the auditor is, is expecting of you. So um, we can go on to the next slide. If you um, uh, if you have, and this one is uh, entitled the 80-20 rule, right? Um, and I, as I said during the start of the conversation, um, the oh by the way, my network connection has been reestablished. It looks like um, start if you're still there. Oh, okay, uh, yeah, I'm here. I've got a message wanna... saying that I'm back. No, that's all right. I'll, I'll get it back from you when the slides are over. <laughs> I mean, it, you just, I'll keep rolling with these slides, and then if you want to show uh, the product when we get there, then I'll just toss over control to you. All right, that works. Okay. So the 80-20 rule, right? No such thing as being 100% compliant. Don't go there. Um, even if you did somehow manage to get 100% compliant in the eyes of the auditor, that still doesn't guarantee safety anyway. The key is that you should work with your auditor to define scope so that we don't do uh, there's such a thing as over compliance. As we'll see in cost, this thing can eat you out of home uh, and hearth, and you don't want to do that. You want to do enough that, that is sensible, but really defined by sensibility first, not just by the, the, the rule. And there are guidelines, such as the consensus audit guidelines that are available from the SANS Institute that give you a roadmap. How do you get there? What do you do first? What do you do second? If you only had a limited budget, what are the top 10, 20 things that you should do? And those guidelines are very worth um, Worth, worth uh, looking at. So the next slide down um, <clears throat> talks about this budget. You know, how do you know what to budget? So there's an interesting study that was done by the Panama Institute. Uh, they, they conducted a bunch of interviews 
uh, at uh, a number of companies from smaller ones to really very large ones. And um, what they found was that uh, really everyone got hacked in the last 12 months. So if you uh, Todd push the space bar, it will show you the next, uh, there you go. Everyone got hacked for the last 12 months and so therefore they were both compliance as well as non-compliance cost. And if you, if you push the space bar, you'll see the next average cost and then the average cost of non-compliance. So what's compliance? Compliance is how much money you should expect to spend in being able to demonstrate to the auditor. And that notwithstanding, if you do get hacked, which is just possible, then what the costs are going to be of remediation? <clears throat> As you can see, excuse me, the cost of compliance is one thing, but the cost of non-compliance is nearly two and a half to three times bigger. So when people say, oh, it costs me too much to comply, it's worth asking the question, what do you think it's going to cost you if you're found out? The answer is nearly three times as much, not to mention all kinds of other costs. By the way, where is this number really coming from? Um, if you go to the next slide, you'll see that the compliance budget uh, goes nearly 8% to making policy, 10% to explaining it to all of your employees, 13% actually run the program, 29% to tools such as Event Tracker, 18% to actually watch it, and then when you see people doing things that they shouldn't, around 22% of your budget is spent in actually getting them to correct their habits so that you're really back in compliance again. So there is a well-established uh, uh, study that tells you specifically what to expect, and so if you know your employee size, you can pretty much guess uh, on the basis of this study, um, you know where your money is going to go. Now let's look at the next slide, and this one talks about the cost of non-compliance. So you decided either that you're not going to comply, or notwithstanding complying, you still got hacked anyway. So there are some other costs that you have to deal with. Now you would imagine uh, most people do that the biggest worry that they have is the fine or the penalty. Imagine your surprise when you look at the slide. The fine or the penalty is really the smallest component of the cost. The biggest thing is that your business got disrupted and there's a revenue loss, not to mention the loss of, of your good name. Uh, Heartland, for instance, or TJ Maxx is still suffering from the, the negative effects uh, of the massive breach uh, that they had. So this gives you a sense on, uh, on, uh, on what the costs are. If you go to the next slide, you know, this is a summary of um, what you should be thinking about. First of all, notice everyone in that study got hacked, right? So it didn't matter how much security you had put in, still got hacked anyway. Cost of non-compliance, you noted that was nearly three times the size, the cost of compliance. And then in the next bullet down, you'll see that you worry, worry, worry about penalty, but really the thing is that it's the disruption to the business and then last but not the least, it really costs more to monitor and enforce the rules than it does to actually buy the software. So, so give some thought to who's actually going to drive you know, the, the weapon once you do in fact uh, acquire it. So let's move on to uh, the next slide and um, we're going to talk about the top five reports uh, that the auditor uh, requires. And if you hand control back, Todd, I'll go to the demo in order to demonstrate uh, demonstrate uh, demonstrate event tracker. So thank you. So um, I'm going to show you uh, an instance of event tracker. Uh, let's see now. It looks like I need to log back in again. Uh, this is a trading instance that's available uh, on our website. Uh, and here I am logging into that training instance. And by the way, I'm going to show you this. Um, this demo using Event Tracker Log Manager, which is a um, entry entry level edition of uh, Event Tracker, um, available um, from Productive Corp, and um, certainly is capable of the uh, oh of satisfying the the compliance guidelines. So here we go. Um, as you can see, there are really fundamentally three things that this version of Event Tracker does. It looks at incidents, it allows you to perform searches, and then it gives you reports. Uh, and I'm going to go over to the reports. And as we looked at the top five reports that um, the uh, um, 
auditor was asking about, uh, let's see, here they are, right? First and foremost is um, authentication and access. Who's been actually touching your touching your system or your or your assets? Is that something that you can show pretty quickly? So here in Event Tracker, there are a variety of reports uh, that are available. It depends upon the kind of report that you pick uh, and or the technology that um, that you'd be interested in. So for instance, here are login failures that you might see from um, a Linux box. Uh, if you have those kinds of boxes on your on your network, you can see both successful as well as failed. These are the, these are the ones that, um, that, that have failed. And as you can see, we're fond of really short reports that you can sort uh, very quickly indeed. So where did the problems occur? Uh, on which machines? Where did the user come from? And what was the name of the user? And if you can get that info, and you can sort this in, in other ways. For instance, here, Chris Mills, from that IP address on that machine at this date time, uh, failed to log in. And of course, this is only the, the uh, uh, Unix side of the house. You can also look at the Windows side of the house. Uh, and so you see successful non-interactive logins in this particular report. Or you can, in fact, look at. Um, uh, a combination report that gives you the whole thing. So these are the successful non-interaction reports. And you see that Yasmin Brown has logged in three times. The whole objective of, um, of reporting is to try to see whether there's anything that you should be doing, yay or nay. And by the way, when you see a report, you can annotate that report. So for instance, we examined uh, syslog login success. You can quickly write a note that says you, you actually reviewed it, and you don't see a problem with it. So reviewed OK, and saved this. The icon actually changes here, and the note gets auto-dated and auto-signed. And you can quickly run a report here on reports where you export this stuff to Excel. And so you can quickly demonstrate to the auditor that you have, in fact, been uh, reviewing the report. So even in the event tracker log manager piece that, uh, that we're offering, uh, the, the entry-level product, this is a feature that's included, and it's specifically done so to satisfy the, uh, the compliance requirements. The next report is um, is privileged activity, and privileged activity is something you know. It's, it's all about what the what the administrators are doing, uh, and so you can look at um, some reports having to do with uh, admin uh, and and review what the administrators have been doing. For instance, here is a set of administrative activities that uh, have been conducted. Uh, by different users. So here's a Ken or a Kenneth who has admin power. Uh, here's the stuff that they've been doing. And I can get to the details and perhaps isolate Ken as an administrator to identify specifically what uh, Ken's been doing. So as I look through this, I want to know what uh, Ken's been doing. I can filter the report. And here are the three things that he's done. You know, He's created an account, uh, added somebody to a local security group, deleted an account, right? So these are the kinds of reports that, uh, that are available and will satisfy your, um, um, your auditor. That's uh, the next thing down is firewall changes. Uh, and these are important because of the criticality of firewalls in your enterprise. So um, most people will not complain when there is a change in the firewall rule, as long as it doesn't really affect them. But this is a favorite tactic for hackers everywhere to sort of get in and say, um, change the firewall rules, allowing them access. This way, it's their own private backdoor, and they can get in or out. The good news is that pretty much every firewall that's out there uh, now puts out um, uh, logs that tell you when specifically a, uh, uh, a configuration change has actually occurred. And we're looking at one, for instance, in this case, where firewall changes may have may have occurred uh, on a Cisco ASA. So again, sorted by user, and then with the details. So if I were interested to know what Bruce has done, you know, he's done a failover reset. So this on a Cisco ASA tells you exactly what's going on. So if they actually change the config to allow themselves a backdoor, uh, then that's something that you can uh, certain something that you can certainly be aware of as well. Uh, the next on our list is um, um, unauthorized change. And uh, what I mean by that, server changes, 
this is a file integrity problem, right? If, if critical files on your machine have changed, maybe EXEs uh, have been dropped, and that's a favorite tactic that malware is always trying to set the, uh, put, you know, drop an EXE. Or maybe you inserted a, a USB, and that USB was infected, and the infection copied itself onto your onto your machine. Either way, you have a change in the server, which is important to to be aware of. And this kind of report essentially tells you uh, what changes have occurred and whether they've been unauthorized uh, or not. So you see here, for instance, some of these might be on on uh, on knowledge, things like documents, but other or, or Excel files, but some others might actually be EXEs. Uh, like keylogger or hacker that you see here. And so this report will give you details on specifically where the changes have occurred and whether the file was added. For instance, this keylogger was added uh, or whether they were deleted. And so you see this uh, accounts.xls has been deleted, right? And you see a hacker.exe has actually been added on uh, on Workstation 4. So being able to tell these is, uh, is another important uh, report regardless of the uh, of the standard that you're being held to. Uh, the fifth on our list is is essentially file access. Uh, and file access is that age-old problem of uh, who touched the file. Um, this might not even have anything to do, uh, there you go. This might not even have absolutely anything to do with uh, an auditor, but it may be something that management uh, is particularly interested in, right? Who touched the file? It's one of the most popular questions that uh, that managers like to ask that IT people really dread because it's usually a very tedious thing to sort out. Well, if you've been collecting your stuff in Event Tracker, this is a, this is something that's already available. For instance, here's the FISMA file access by server or um, the access report by a user. Uh, you could do this for FISMA, you could do this for PCI, or you could do it just because the boss asked you about it. Um, so here, for instance, I'm going to open this one. This is a successful file access. So it's not a question of them not being able to touch the file. They were able to touch the file. They did touch the file. And so which ones uh, did, in fact, get changed? And so you see here the summary report that tells you what that these are the users that have been involved. And then in the details, you can see that Anderson has touched you know, payroll.xlsx. So if you were interested in all of the people who touched payroll, you see Anderson touched it. Uh, at 7.19 in the morning, and then Beverly touched it at, at, at 10.03. Um, so this gives you a good way to identify who's been touching uh, files in the, uh, uh, in the environment. And, and absent a solution like Event Tracker, this is a very, very difficult problem uh, to, to solve. Uh, now, there are a couple of other threats uh, or reports that might be valuable to you. Uh, one of them is the the uh, the insider threat. You know, somebody copying stuff onto a USB, uh, and that's a feature that's available in Event Tracker as well. If you choose to, then from any Windows machine, you can identify uh, whether people have been inserting USBs and whether or not um, they've actually had um, anything get copied to it. And also, outside threats, attacks that have happened uh, from the network. This is something that uh, Event Tracker is also capable of. Now, you've already had a look at Event Tracker Log Manager. Let me tell you a couple of things about the company. Uh, we're based in the Washington, D.C. area. Our partner here is, uh, is productive. And Event Tracker is the dashboard that you saw to find out what's happening, what's happened, and what's different. Now, Todd, you talked about forensics. That's certainly one of the use cases. And then we're here talking about compliance. And we have ready-made reports available for that alphabet soup of uh, compliance standards that are out there. Uh, also, we are a uh, uh, SC Magazine five-star rated product. And so if you're interested in more information, I'm going to direct you to Todd and his crack team uh, at Productive. Todd? Yeah. Um, thank you for that. Um, I wanted to ask you, Anas, I mean, you showed us the new product. It looked like I could do all my auditing um, with, you know, the, the, new, the new product that, that you've released. Um, is that true, or, or who is that appropriate for? Or you know, if I'm out, you know, if I'm looking at, yeah, uh, and I think that slide might be the the way to go with it. How, how should I be thinking about this as a, you know, as a customer? What's going to be right for me? So it really depends upon what your needs are, 
and how big your team is. Uh, the log manager solution is certainly capable of all of the compliance uh, features. And if you have a relatively small team where you don't have the luxury of being able to sit in front of a dashboard, uh, and you're thinking that you want the entry-level function. So what, by the way, um, are the entry-level functions? And we have them described here, uh, for instance. You know, these are some of the functions, right? You want reports. You want email alerting. You want collection, but fundamentally you're thinking set and forget. There's another there's another picture that um, that is helpful in this case. Let me show it to you. It's up on the website, and it allows you to see under what conditions might might be might be the log manager is more appropriate. So here under which solution, you can see these. Right? Is your team size relatively small? Are you fundamentally looking for centralized log management? If so, then Event Tracker Log Manager is your answer. Right? What you'll get is easy setup, all of the alerts in real time, ready reports. And really, this is the kind of product that you set and forget. It's there all the yeah. time. It's working all the time. It will notify you when you need to be notified. It will never lose any of the data. But it won't be in your face and be needy about wanting your time. And if there's only a few of you, then you're probably really already busy up to the gills with work. Mm -hmm. The last thing you need is a needy piece of software that keeps wanting your attention every 15 minutes. And that's what the log manager solution is. Can it be used for compliance? Absolutely. That's one of its goals. Now if your team is a little bit bigger, then in addition to all of the stuff that we talked about, there are also dashboards that are available. And that's the Event Tracker Security Center, which adds things like real-time risk awareness, uh, graphical searches, and a role-based dashboard. Even even larger teams will will need file integrity monitoring, uh, maybe behavior, uh, status up and down. And Event Tracker Enterprise can solve that problem. It's highly scalable. It's got full support for the entire spectrum, uh, and is uh, very favored by the US DoD. It has this feature called the Security Analyst Data Mart, which is uh, very powerful if you've got a dedicated security guy. And even larger teams will need things like. Uh, 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 SCAP or CVSS type scoring correlation. Now these are people that want integration with PeopleSoft, integration with SAP, with all kinds of other maybe security tools that they might have. Their IT environment may span uh, you know, multiple places in the world. They're looking for SCAP and CVSS support. So we've got the full range of uh, solutions available and they're really from a common code base. So it's the exact same product in all of the cases. The only really difference is is licensing. Yeah. So you're telling me, right? If I started at, uh, with the log manager, but I found it out, I really found I needed a little more, right? I would just get the additional licensing, and and that capability would be unlocked. That's correct. And the licensing would only apply on the console side. Uh, if yeah. you had installed any monitoring on the target machines then no changes there. Oh, okay, great. And like the log manager, right? I mean, all these products, it's, you, you get them right, it's all about configuring your environment, but I think you were telling me, right, or, which I liked, which was, you know, you install it, takes five minutes to get log manager uh, installed, and it's live by lunch, right? A couple hours to get it configured? Yes, these are all virtual appliances that are shipping. We support both VMware as well as Hyper-V. It will literally take you five minutes to get the uh, get the software and instantiate an instance. And after that, it may be an hour or maybe two to configure it to your particular network, your particular alerts, who you think the they should go to, how they should go to, things of that sort. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds that's awesome. Thank you uh, for that. I'm going to take back uh, control here, and uh, once again, really appreciate. Uh, the presentation. We went through uh, a lot of stuff. I think uh, you know what, what you should think about it, it, is you're looking at this in, in your audit requirements. If you do have a requirement, um, you know, event tracker is a great way to make sure that you're uh, ahead of uh, the eight ball, so to speak. Uh, our reps are going to follow up with you. Make sure you got everything that you need. Uh, we'll get uh, the fantastic shirt of the month out to you. Anna, thanks as always. Uh, great. I think uh, you sound even better when you're here in person in Minneapolis than when you do out on the East Coast. That's my bias, being a Midwest kid, but uh, that's how it goes. So thank you so much. Everybody else, thank you for uh, taking the time.
Uh, we're giving you a little bit of your uh, day back, so I hope you appreciate that. I'm Todd Obert from Productive, and uh, thanks again. We'll be talking to you soon. Thanks.